I would just like to say hello. How are you? I'm fantastic. <laughs> That's good to hear. Um, for one of the first questions I have is, um, what do you do for a living? <laughs> so I am a. Uh, I run an independent game. How much do you know? I mean, from a personal background about electronics. About what? About the electronics industry. It's my company. Um, I'm pretty new to the, uh, this. I, I was just looking up game designer companies. Um, I'm not too familiar with your work. Okay, so I run uh, an independent game studio. Oh. Yeah, so we're, we're totally independent. Um, we are. Uh, we don't have a publisher. We're self-published. I mean, like we, have, we only have one game out. Like, so you know, actually. I didn't know what you games before, but we just shipped a game called Space Gun like a year ago, self-published, we're totally independent. Uh, I'm the owner slash creative, creative director, I get the head game designer, uh, I do a lot of our production, I do all of our business stuff. Mm. I do some programming, sort of wear a bunch of hats. Oh. Um, how did you get started? Uh, I've always been into games. I did uh, a lot of programming. I was pretty tough. I, I always kind of knew that I was going to go into uh, do computer programming, and oh. and I did. You know, so in like high school, uh, when I was at your age, I did a bunch of independent study stuff, computer programming, and just learned a bunch about that. Mm -hmm. Went to college for computer science and computer engineering, thinking I was going to do some sort of like hardcore computer engineering programming kind of thing, and ended up uh, involved with the game development club. And so I, my roommate was really into making video games then, so I was like, oh, this is awesome, you know, we're going to make video games. And then just sort of started learning more about that. Uh, and then started learning that I really liked game design and really hated programming. Yeah. And uh, I, I worked at Microsoft for two and a half years as a, a programmer and sort of despised doing it and just sort of, you know, so it really was not big into programming, especially a company like Microsoft. I and mean, it's really, really technical programming stuff, very much nothing. I was on Office. It was nothing like games. And it was very, very dry, and it's all about being like absolutely correct. And I was not really into that, so I, I left and started a. I, I made a game on the side and worked on space camp with some people that I knew. Yeah. And it was successful enough that I, I left Microsoft and now run a full time studio. That is awesome. Um, yeah. <laughs> what do you like the most about what you do? Ah, uh, so I, I'm in. I like. I like it game design plot because it, it's kind of magical. I mean, mm. I don't, I imagine you play video games. Yes, sir. You're interested in this. And it, it's sort of like the magic to it because you're like creating like a world where stuff happens and it's very, it's very cool. And being able to take your, like your imagination and then like these things that you can imagine, like imagine like, oh, this would be so cool if I made a game like this and then actually make that a thing that people can play and that you can play. is definitely the, the, the primary attraction. But, since I run the studio also, I get the benefit of being able to be in charge, which I find the best thing ever. Yeah. Uh, and it's like Microsoft, you have like a billion bosses and everybody else gets to tell you what to do, whereas now I can tell everybody else what to do, and uh, that's pretty cool. And yeah. you have to like, put in 20 years to sort of shift the risk and you get to be in charge, which is cool. Yeah. So, um, since you're indie, you're, you run an indie company, and uh, I've, I've been following the indie scene. Uh, I'm surprised I haven't heard of you guys, but... Uh, I just look into various things, just like Desura, uh, the Humble and the Bundle, and seeing those indie developers too. And uh, my question is, what what advantages do you think indie development has over like big studios like EA and Activision? What do you, what freedoms do you think you have? So it's cool because you can, you can agree, you can make any kind of game you want. I mean, a lot, a lot of the studios are. They, they have to make these games that cost, like, millions and millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. And they have to make millions and millions of dollars to make it up, you know? So they can't take as many risks. I mean, we have so Space Chem, our game that, that was our cash cow, is a puzzle game that's about chemistry. Like, EA oh, could space, not do that. Space they, they Chem? They could never do that. And, but we were able to do it because our, you know, we have no cost. You know, yeah. we have to pay a couple people, you know, very little to make, to make games. So we really don't have to do as well as a game like... You know, Call of Duty has to. Yes. You said the game was no, Space Chem? Space Chem. Oh, yes. I've played that game. I, uh, I just bought it like a few weeks ago. I just turned it on and I enjoy it. It's a very interesting yeah. concept. Yeah, I've played you guys' yeah. games. We made Space Chem. So, like, you know, like a big deal. Yeah, it could never make Space Chem. Like, yeah. that would just never happen. Yeah. So, uh, it's also cool because we don't, like, we're self-published. So, we don't have to get approval from a publisher and, like, try to appease them. 
and it's fun. Like, we can do it how we want. Yeah. I think that's the best part. It's just very, it's very satisfying. On a, like you know, when I when I put Microsoft, it's like wow, I'm making so much money. I made so much money at Microsoft. It was ridiculous. But like, I, I do not make so much money now. But like the, the level of personal satisfaction I feel like every day, like whatever I do, is totally because like I did it. You yeah. know, and uh, at Microsoft, it was not that case. Hmm. Um, the next question would be, um, what do you dis- dislike about your job? Uh, there's a lot of a lot of risk. Definitely. I mean, I'm, you know, so I, the, the way that I was able to start the studio is because of the success of Space Camp. So I basically just bankrolled all of our earnings from Space Camp into making a bigger game. And that's definitely a risk because the next game could not do as well, and then bam, like that was just a ton of money wasted. So there's always the risk that, that a game is not going to do well. And there are ways to control it by, like, making a bunch of little games and not making anything that's too big. Yeah. But it's still, it's still kind of scary. And the fact that, like, at the end of the day, like, if I, if I mess up, if I, I'm always the final say over everything we do, but if I make a bad decision and mess up, that I, I definitely, like, could lose a lot of money and mm-hmm. have to go back to a normal job, and that would be terrible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have to, like, you know, because I'm married, so I have to run everything by my wife, and, you know, to, not to disappoint her. Yeah. <laughs> so, a lot uh, of personal. Res- responsibility is both good and bad. Mm-hmm. So, um... On the talk of money, like how much, how much would you be like making? Like, how would that be? How much do you make? Personally? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, uh, it depends. It's hard to say. So the way we did space camp was all profit sharing. So of, of the amount of money that we made off of space camp, I got a percentage of it, and it did pretty well. But. Mm-hmm. Like, didn't make a, a ton, and I guess, like, if that was the end of everything, like, if I just did space come in and never did game stuff again, I could pocket it, and then I would have said, like, oh, yeah, I did pretty well off of that, but considering that all the money I make really is off of the business, and then goes into paying other people's salaries, I basically, I take as little as, like, as I have to off of the top of that. Uh. So, it's, it's hard to say, it's not, I mean, uh, to think. yeah, I don't know, I could keep whatever's left over, so I can make, I can make nothing in a year. I could make two hundred thousand dollars in a year. It depends on how on how well we do. Uh huh. So the basically the, the your paycheck is basically controlled by the your game, basically your yeah. success of the game. Uh-huh. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And how much how much I'm willing to invest in the future things? Yes. You know that like I I could I could like take all the money that I have and like go buy a house right away. But it's like or I could. Like hold on to that money and then spend it on making another game and make more money and be able to grow and be able to take on really ambitious projects because you know like the money that I could withdraw to use personally is the same money that that I use to, to grow the company and make new stuff. So mm-hmm. it's, it's sort of one of those decisions. So I, I usually just you know, I, I think of it more of like scraping off the top to, to pay my own personal bills and to try to keep those as well as possible. So it's not really a thing that impacts it. Yeah. Um. What What education or skills are needed to do this? Which part? Programming, the game design, or the, the business? Um, I'd say, I'd say the more of the game, des- um, the game design. Well, but the game design and programming, because I'm basically trying to cover like what yeah. you do. So, I mean, if you could tell me about all three, that would be perfectly fine. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, that's part of the, the many hats thing. So, for programming, you really want to like go to college and get a computer science degree is probably because the things you'll do for that book or that degree. And like that, like extracurricular, like clubs you'll join, you'll join the the, you know, the ACM, the Association of Computing Machinery. You'll yeah. join the Game Dev Club. You'll know other programmers. You'll work on personal projects. Like everything that surrounds the computer science experience is a really good way to learn programming. And getting an internship because of it, and then getting a job. And, like all of that, that, that career path is definitely a really great way to learn programming. Hmm. Um, but other, you know, it's probably not necessary. I mean, the, the great thing about programming is all you need is a computer. Yeah. The internet, that you can hypothetically just learn to be really good at programming by just programming a lot. Yeah, I believe there's that. Some people, there's some people who do that. And a lot of games, especially in the game industry, it does not matter what your background is. You have to, like, if you can prove that you're awesome, they'll hire you. Yeah. And it's very much like a talent-based industry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because... So, like, with programming, you just have to learn to program either through going to school or just through programming a lot. And, and being good at it and not being full of yourself and being you know, a good person to work with. Uh, game design is stranger because there aren't, there aren't really a lot of good college programs. There's no equivalent of computer science for game design. Yeah. So you just merely have to have lots of experience making 
making games and then being good at it. And then, like, that's how I learned to make games, just by making games on my own. No one taught me how to be a game designer. I read some books and have just done it a bunch. You know, I've been doing it for years now. And I, I still don't think I'm that good at game design. Like, it's, it's, really, it's weird. It's not quite like programming where, you know, it's like you kind of look and say, oh, that's a good program. Like, that works. It doesn't crash. There's no bugs in that. Very good. Yeah, you know, but with game design, it's, you can always, it's always be better. It's always be worse. It's always be more fun. It's, it's much more wishy-washy. Yeah. And uh, I, the same thing is probably true of business. Like, business is even harder because, like, I, it's, uh, I don't know. <laughs> you, just, you just do it. I guess technically you could get an M- MBA or something, but I don't think that's enough. I have no, I have no formal business training whatsoever, and I managed to get by with business things. Just sort of like go out, like networking. Networking is always good. Yes. <laughs> I didn't really understand networking until I had things personally gained from it, and then it all makes sense. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, my question is also would be, um, what is the most challenging thing about you? Uh, about what you do? Oh, God. I mean, so, I mean, from from a game design perspective, your goal is to make things that are fun. And fun is really nebulous. And probably the hardest part is, at the end of the day, I'm on the line to make something that's fun Mm -hmm. and innovative. And that's like a real hit or miss thing. I work on a project now that we probably, we did like four iterations of completely not fun games before we finally found something that was like fun enough that we could actually proceed and make it. And, and that, that's definitely kind of a terrifying thing because there's no, there's no guarantee that you will, that you'll find something fun and that you'll make something. And I guess eventually you have to ship something even if it's not good and that, that, that's got to happen in the industry. I mean, there are terrible games that come out. You know, but that's, that's kind of a scary thing. Having, having to find something, like get on the line to find something that isn't even guaranteed to be there. And it's hard to describe, even if you found it. It's kind of... I, I think that's the hardest part. Yeah, the obscurity. Wait, which? Oh, I said the obscurity of uh, trying to do this, because you're looking for something oh, yeah, that's definitely, really not yeah. defined. Um, what is the most rewarding part of what, of what you do? I'm uh, getting to be my own boss. I find that extremely rewarding. And that, that even when I'm doing work, I'm making games. Like, it's kind, of, it's kind of absurd when you think about it. You know, it's like it's kind of a fun thing. Yes, sir. It's challenging. I think that's just the, the work and the, and the autonomy are, are my favorite parts. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of satisfaction involved. Mm-hmm. What advice would you offer to someone considering this career? Uh, make lots of games. Yeah. That's for, for game designers, at least. My, my standard advice for, for people who want to be game designers is just make lots of games. Start making games. Even if you don't have a program, there's things you can do where you can make games, you can make a board game, you can make a uh, tool like Game Maker, just start making games. Because the only way to learn about how to make games is to make games, have people play them, find out what's fun, find out what's not, and get a, like a gut instinct for how to make good games. Yeah. There's lots, of, there's lots of good books out now, actually, about game design that 10 years ago I do not think existed, those kind of books. So, mm. yeah. try to play lots of games, different games, not just the same game over and over again, doesn't count. I think that's all good advice. Um, yeah, that's what I found interesting, because m- uh, myself, I started off programming, like, I wanted to get into games, so I started learning programming when I was, like, in the 8th grade. I learned C++, uh, I just picked up an uh, open source library and started messing around with that, and I made a simple game back then, but what I find the most difficult part is the game, the design part, so I actually went to school on that, to try to get better on that, so... Yeah, yeah. I, I really exactly. think it's... Programming helps, too, definitely. Because when, when you're programming, that's like, like you say you want to write a book, like you have to be able to, like, read. Yeah. <laughs> I think programming helps a lot in that regard. Yeah. So, how much time off do you get or take? Oh, I, uh, as much as I want. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. We, we have, like, an informal policy in our, in our studio of just, like, if you need time off, you can take it. And no, no one's really counting, and I mean, as long as the work gets done, like that's okay. The there's no places that do that too, but I mean, personally, I can I can kind of take off as much time as I can stretch. You know, I, I, I'm planning on going on like a like a month long trip, you know, and I can I can work remotely if I want to if I wanted to do that. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's pretty flexible, as long as we we ship a game, then yeah, I can do whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> um. What's the common misconception people have about what you do? I think that's okay. Have you ever seen those commercials for like the 
be in school. Yeah. Like, I teach tech, and they're like, oh man, I'm making video games. And they're just sitting around, like, playing video games. Yeah. Making video games is nothing like playing video games. Yeah, I have to agree with you. <laughs> yeah, and game, te- game testing is the worst job in the world. <laughs> there is no worse job than really? game testing. Because you have to play the same parts of the same games over and over for, like, 12 hours a day. And mm-hmm. get paid really terribly, money, terrible money. And they're all like, oh, like, if you, if, you, if you are not happy with your job, they will toss you out and bring in somebody else who has no idea how unfun game testing is. <laughs> wow. I did not know that. Yeah. Um, and the worst, the worst thing is that, like, since there's no, there's, you know, there's no degree for game design, they often hire people from within the company. So, one of, like, the, the reliable ways to get a job as a game designer is to work in game testing for years and years and years. And then maybe if you're lucky and you'd be there for, like, five years, all they'll consider making you a game designer. Like, a junior level game designer, where you get to, like, design levels or something really well. Yeah. Yeah, and that's basically what I was looking at. Like, if I wanted to stay at Microsoft and become a game designer, like, I kind of was able to, I worked on, like, the opportunity for myself, I would be, like, a junior designer doing level design, as opposed to now I get to be a creative director at a really shitty small indie team. And I would definitely prefer being a creative director at a tiny studio than, than just, like, a junior level designer. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, what are your goals or dreams for the future? Uh, I would like to grow the studio to be definitely bigger where we can take on more ambitious projects. Mm. Um, definitely be successful in that business. What else would you like people to know about what you do? Uh, can you know what again? Hello? Can you repeat that question? Oh, okay. what else would you like people to know about what you do? Oh, much actually <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of anything kind of secretive you know <laughs> yeah um what uh what direction do you think um in like projects that's deploying your stuff on iPad Android you know all the devices what do you think your uh studio will usually like expand to and how how do sales vary on uh, each platform like which um uh, the strategies between different platforms are I mean they're they're like completely different planets. I mean, like the the way that you sell a game on the uh, on the iPhone, yeah, is completely different from how you sell a game on PC. I mean, so we, the reason space comes with the PC title is because there's no other platform where you can ship a game like that and have it do well. Yeah, because you just have like the right the right kind of people play PC games and are willing to tolerate the right kind of thing, you know, and have mice kind of a big thing. And uh, whereas people on like the iPhone and stuff are looking for really quick, simple games because most of the people playing on it are much more casual audience not looking for a puzzle game about chemistry. Yeah. So, and there's like different, I mean, there's even different things, like if you, if you bought your release on the iPad, like, uh, I was going to talk last night, somebody was talking about this, that they actually, the people at Apple now strongly encourage that you launch your game in Canada, because if there's like a bug in your launch, like if you, if you launch like a big bug, like a serious bug, uh, and you launch it like in America, you will never show up on any of the charts, ever. Wow. So, and like, you know, it's like the only way to get like really good sales of your game on the uh, the iPhone is to get on the charts. And like to get in the top 20, you know, it co- like I was saying, it costs like $300,000 in advertising. Wow. To get on the top. And like, that's just like such a bizarre thing. Like on Steam, like, you know, if you can get on Steam, you're going to sell copies just because like you're on Steam and you do well. But yeah. on the Apple store, it's like, it's just like this terrible, terrible battlefield of terribleness. Yeah. So I really, well, you know, I, I, we, we try to stay away from it because we're, you know, I mean, Space Jam's not really the most successful game, but even though we'd like to get more accessible, like, I still don't want to make, like, Angry Birds. So, we have a really hard trust to, to perform well on a platform like the App Store. Oh. Uh-huh. So. Well, um, thank you. Um, can you please give me your your name again, please? Yeah, Zach Barge. Zach Barge. Um, thank you for sitting down and talking to me. Uh, I, I just love that you gave me the chance. I, I enjoy the conversation. Um, great conversation, man. Thank you. Yeah, take care. All right. See you, man.